And joining us now is Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser. Let's see, we're going to get that shot. How you doing? Good. How are you? Thank you for joining us. Well, glad to be with you. This is uh, crazy times for us here in Louisiana. It certainly is. So where are you riding out this hurricane right now? Well, I'm, I just came home to Plaquemines Parish, my home down here with my wife, to check on the water levels up against the levee here, and I'll be heading back to Baton Rouge uh, tomorrow morning um, and then heading over uh, your way um, to help with the relief and rescue efforts uh, as soon as the storm passes. Now, you were Plaquemines Parish president during Hurricane Katrina 15 years ago. How does the anticipation of Laura compare with that? Well, I actually rode out Katrina 14 miles from the eye. My home's uh, six feet above the Mississippi River levee. I was not parish president, but after rescuing 30 people and not seeing a good response by the government at the time, that inspired me to run, but I can mm -hmm. run for office. But I can tell you this storm is, is not approaching Louisiana like Katrina and anyone that's in the direct path, 20 feet of, of wall of water will not survive. And I just hope everybody in the direct path was able to get out because this is not a hurricane that they will survive if you take a direct hit. Yeah, this, this is seeming to be an incredibly dangerous storm. So what resources are the state of Louisiana prepared to marshal once the storm is actually passed? Well, they moved all the assets that were planning for the first hurricane on the east side of the state are positioned to move in uh, the governor's team. They're, they're going to be moving people into several of our state parks uh, afterwards that will be housed there, uh, knowing that a lot of the housing will be gone. And, um, and it's been a challenging time because the evacuation and the shelters uh, moving people into individual hotels as opposed to these group shelters because of the COVID-19, you had to worry about the safety of the people from mm -hmm. the storm and from the virus. So it's been a challenge, and, and, and the team has really been working around the clock to, to meet those challenges. And uh, hopefully everybody got out safely uh, that's in harm's way, and, um, and we can get back in and start rebuilding immediately after the storm has passed. So those challenges that, that you speak of, what do you think will be some of the biggest ones that we're facing here? Well, I think, obviously, we hope everyone got out and we're praying for anyone that didn't uh, and their safety. But immediately after, when you're talking about a 20 foot, uh, 20 feet of water, a wall of water, um, there's not going to be much left. So getting in there and restoring the, the, the roads, the electrical, um, you're, you're starting from nothing in those areas. And then there'll be many other areas along the coast um, that are going to be flooded and going to need uh, a lot of help. You know, we have a, a volunteer Louisiana, uh, volunteerlouisiana.gov, where we have over 10,000 Louisianans that sign up, that go in and help after, man the shelters, help people gut homes, and, uh, and we'll be out there in force, as Louisianans always do. They reach out and help out their neighbors. So it's going to take a lot of resources um, because this thing is going to impact from, as you know, Morgan City all the way over is going to have a lot of damage that we're going to have mm -hmm. to get in there and help those people, our, our neighbors out. And uh, kind of speaking on what you just said, your thoughts as Louisiana prepares for this devastating storm to make landfall? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's really, people were so stressed out, so many people out of work. You know, this is shut down 82% mm -hmm. of the oil and gas, all of those uh, refineries, uh, you know, and people that worked at all of these facilities. Um, how quickly can they get back to work? Because uh, we've seen an unprecedented time in this country with the shutdown from the COVID-19 on top of the slowdown in the oil industry. Um, you know, it's, it's just been a, one thing after another that we've had to deal with. And that's why it's going to take extra special hard work to get this uh, state back quickly uh, and rebuild it as quickly as possible. No. Sorry, Tessa. Now, as you mentioned, you were saying, you know, it's kind of been one thing after another. One of those things, of course, being COVID-19. So in addition to having a struggle with shelters for these people, are you concerned moving forward when it comes to our, our hospitals and being kind of stretched thin when we have even more need for them? It's absolutely. You know, we saw an overwhelming, uh, the hospitals were 
from COVID-19 when it spiked. Uh, luckily, it's leveled off a little, and they got some relief. But um, but knowing there's going to be people needing help after this, from the hospitals to the people that have got to go in and, and do the gutting and the, and the repairs of the roads and, and the electricity, it's just it's a it's a tough time for all aspects of Louisiana that have been stretched thin, and then there's so many people that are being evacuated that have been out of work, and uh, so it's just been a very difficult time. And we're going to have to pray for all Louisianans mm-hmm. and really work together as a team. Um, and I know we'll come back. You know, we didn't think we'd come back after Katrina. And so uh, I, I'm, I know Louisianans and the way they help their neighbors. Uh, we'll get through this and uh, like we always do, helping our neighbors. Most definitely. Well, Governor, Lieutenant Governor, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Well, let's pray for everybody and be safe. Thank you. Thank you. You stay safe.